Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Larry Sterna, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the electric potential. You may not recognize that term, but it's the same thing as something that most people are very familiar with. That is voltage. Let's begin. To begin, I want to tell you there are two different methods to describe problems and to solve problems in physics. One of them involves vectors. One of the methods involves scalars. Scalar is just another word for number. In the vector method, you begin with the electric force. Remember, you must have at least two objects in order to have a force. Each object exerts a force on the other. Every single charge can have an electric field. We say that every charge is surrounded by an electric field. And we answer the question, how does one charge exert a force on the other? By saying that each charge is surrounded by an electric field when another charge enters that electric field, it experiences a force given by this relationship Q times E. In the scalar method, we start with potential energy. In order to have potential energy, you must have at least two charges. However, a single charge can have a potential. We say that every charge is surrounded by a region of potential, electric potential, or we use the term voltage. We use the symbol capital V. And we say, well, how do two charges have potential energy? Well, we look at this formula here. We say that each charge is surrounded by a region of potential, it's the capital B, when a second charge, Q, enters that region of potential. You have a potential energy given by this formula, Q times V. You see the two methods side by side, they look similar on the left, they're all vectors. On the right, they're all scalars. But how do they relate to one another? By using these two methods to describe the same situation, we'll see how the electric field is related to changes in potential. Let's calculate the work on a charge using vectors. The two vectors we need to calculate work are force and displacement. You see, in this picture, we have a positive charge sitting in an electric field that points down. We know that for a positive charge, the force will be in the same direction as the electric field. So I'll put an arrow there indicating that the force on the charge is down. We expect the charge to move downward. How do we calculate the work? You may remember from a first semester physics that work is force times displacement. But there's a caveat. The force must be in the direction of the displacement to contribute to the work. That's the meaning of the dot product. And that expression there, I have the force vector, the dot, delta r vector. The delta r vector is the displacement. The meaning of the dot is that the force only contributes to the work if it's in the direction of the displacement. Another way to write this expression is to put 
each component of the force, Fx, Fy, Fz, multiply it by the corresponding displacement, delta x, delta y, delta z. Notice that we start with two vectors, force and displacement. We obtain work, which is a number. If we consider an xy coordinate system, we see the way the electric field is oriented, the way the charge is moving will be in the y direction. Therefore, the only component contributing to the work will be Fy delta y, the force in the y direction times the displacement delta y in the y direction. Remember, force vector is Q times electric field vector. Therefore, each component of the force is going to be the charge times the corresponding component of the electric field vector. Therefore, Fy is Q times Ey. And we can write the work in terms of the electric field in this example as Q E sub Y times delta Y. We're now going to look at the same problem of calculating the work on a charge. But this time, we're going to use energy, which is a scalar, to calculate the work. In this picture, the charge is sitting at a level of potential energy, PE1. The charge is free to move to a lower level of potential energy, PE2. We do not need to discuss force. It is a simple fact that if an object is free to move from a higher level of potential energy to a lower level of potential energy, it will do that. Objects tend to go downhill. How do we calculate the work? Well, this is called the work energy theorem. You may have seen this in first semester physics. The amount of work done on an object is equal to the change in kinetic energy. If you have an object, you make it go faster. You do positive work. You increase its kinetic energy. On the other hand, if you make an object move more slowly, you decrease its kinetic energy, you're doing negative work. Delta Ke is the change in the kinetic energy of the object. In physics, we have positive work, we have negative work. When an engine makes a car go faster, it does positive work on the car. When the brakes make the car slow down, the brakes do negative work on the car. Now, in this picture with a charge moving from one level to another, energy is conserved. There's no friction in a simple picture like this. Conservation of energy, meaning the total energy is conserved. Therefore, the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy will sum to zero. The total energy is a constant. Therefore, delta Ke is equal to minus delta Pe. If the potential energy goes down, the kinetic energy goes up. If the potential energy goes up, kinetic energy goes down. So we can write our expression for work in terms of potential energy. Work is equal to negative the change in potential energy. Let's take the definition of work 
from the vector model and set it equal to the definition of work from the scalar model. So we can understand the relationship between the different quantities. Remember, the particle, the charge, moved in the y direction. So in the vector model, work is given by the y component of force, f sub y, times the displacement, delta y. The y component of force is equal to q times the y component of the electric field. So we have q, e sub y, delta y. We said this equal to the value of work from the scalar model, which is minus the change in potential energy. The change in potential energy occurs when the charge moves from its first position to its second position, undergoing the displacement delta y. So the two definitions of work are referring to the same change in position of the charge. The first thing we want to do is look at this expression and imagine we divided by delta y. If we divide by delta y, we can solve for the y component of the force, f sub y. It's going to be minus delta pe divided by delta y. This is truly a fascinating result. What it tells us is the y component of the force is related to the change in potential energy when the charge goes through a displacement delta y. Delta PE over delta y tells you how much the potential energy changes relative to delta y. Let's consider the meaning of the negative sign. Suppose the displacement delta y was positive and the potential energy increased so delta pe was positive also that means the ratio is positive but the negative sign means that fy would be negative that would mean if potential energy is increasing when delta y is positive force points in the opposite direction in other words the force points in the direction that potential energy decreases. It points downhill. Now let's imagine that we divide the equation by Q times delta Y. This allows us to solve for the Y component of the electric field. You divide by Q delta Y, you have E sub Y equal to minus delta PE over Q delta Y. How do we interpret this equation right here? We're going to introduce a definition. This is where we introduce potential. Potential, we use a symbol, capital V, it's the same thing as voltage. It's equal to the potential energy per charge pe over q now q is a constant therefore if the potential energy changes delta v will change q is a constant delta v equals delta pe over q we can now take this new quantity delta v and replace it into the equation for delta p over q. We obtain this result right here. E sub y, y component of the electric field is equal to minus delta v over delta y. Delta v over delta y tells you the ratio of the change in potential, the change in voltage relative to the change in position delta y. 
Let's consider the significance of the minus sign. Suppose delta y is a positive displacement. And suppose the voltage increases when the charge goes through that displacement. Therefore, delta v is positive. Therefore, the ratio delta v over delta y is positive. But the negative sign means the component of the electric field is in the opposite direction. What this means is that the component of the electric field points from higher voltage to lower voltage. It points to lower potential. I derived this expression by assuming there was a charge moving in the y direction and an electric field in the y direction. I could do the identical analysis for the x or the z directions, follow the same steps, I'd get a very similar result. What I would find is that in the three dimensions, x, y, z, similar relationship. The component of the electric field is equal to minus the change in voltage relative to the displacement in that direction. The larger the change in voltage with the displacement, the larger the component of the electric field. The negative sign means each component of electric field points in the direction of decreasing voltage. Important conclusion, there is an electric field wherever voltage changes. What about a conductor at equilibrium? We looked at this in an earlier video. At equilibrium, the electric field vanishes in a conductor. Means all three components vanish, all three equal to zero. Well, you can always have a displacement delta x, delta y, delta z as you move around a conductor. Therefore, if the three components of electric field are zero, it means at equilibrium, delta v is zero in every direction. It means at equilibrium, every part of conductor is at the same voltage. It does not mean the voltage is zero. The voltage could be thousands of volts high. What it means is that from one part of a conductor to another part, the voltage does not change. This is an important principle. We'll be using this in future videos when we look at different circuits. Let's consider something that's rather common. Nine volt battery. What is the nine volts referred to? Would it surprise you if I told you we don't know the voltage of the positive terminal? We don't know the voltage of the negative terminal of that battery. We only know that between the terminals, there is a difference at delta V of nine volts. We also know wherever there is a delta V, there will be an electric field. Therefore, there will be an electric field between the two terminals. Notice how the arrow is drawn. The electric field goes from the positive terminal to the negative. Electric field goes from higher to lower potential. I photographed this battery and I measured the distance between the two terminals, seven millimeters. Therefore, I can calculate what the electric field will be using the equation minus delta V over delta Y. Delta V is nine volts. Delta Y, we must convert to meters. Milli is 10 to the minus three, so seven millimeters, 0 0.007 meters. We calculate it 
we find this 9 volt battery has an electric field minus 1300 volts per meter. It's minus because it points down. It's in the y direction because that's how the battery is oriented. You could turn the battery upside down, left, right, whatever. So the sign of the electric field could be positive, could be negative, could be in the x or the y direction. It just depends on how the battery is oriented because electric field is a vector property. However, delta V is a number. It doesn't matter how the battery is oriented. It doesn't matter how far apart the terminals are. It doesn't matter where you want to do the measurement and so forth. Delta V, the voltage of the battery, is a very convenient thing to work with. Notice that the unit of the electric field is volts per meter. Previously, when we talked about force and field, for the electric field, we used a unit Newton per Coulomb. Which one is correct? They're both correct. It must be that a volt per meter is equivalent to Newton per Coulomb. You can use either one depending upon the context. In this video, I went into some detail to show you the relationship between force and potential energy and the relationship between the electric field and potential. These are very important concepts in physics. In the next video, I'll show you how to calculate the potential and potential energy of charges. See you there.